Hey everybody, Brandon with Bearded CV82. So today we're coming at you with a little bitty unboxing and some basic review of the Fiaci 2 through 7 by 32 rifle scope. Now this is a one inch scope and before I know what some of you guys are gonna say, Fiaci, they're getting their name out there. Well, they did get a hold of me and they did ask me, uh, they gave me a few choices on if there was something that I'd wanna review seen a lot of other guys out there been going with the six by or six to 18 with uh, uh, illuminated reticles in them and I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different although those guys have been enjoying uh, what they've gotten from the company so far uh, I decided on the uh, two to seven now in the review uh, or uh, in the review of course this is the review uh, in the description, it does say that it's a longer eye relief scope. Uh, part of the reason for choosing that, because I think this would be a nice little uh, trial, if you will, on the AR pistol. I got some other testing and fun that I want to do with it, and I figured, oh, why not do a 2 through 7 on there with a little bit longer eye relief and go from there. Now, what you do get is a well-wrapped, and it is like styrofoam secured in there there goes the rubber band you get your do not eat silica gel you know um, get the scope you do get a lens cloth and then you get the uh, Feachi Falcon series rifle scopes uh, and a little bit about them on the back See if it'll focus you friggin' Beep. try. There. There's their description. Uh, Multi-coated optics for superior brightness, uh, excellent edge-to-edge -edge clarity and image resolution, extended eye relief for faster target acquisition. And it's actually Blah. And it does go over everything for the scope. Bullet drop. It does not. It does give you some descriptions on the bullet drop, which is uh, one thing that I had some questions about before. And so I'm going to have to do some reading up on this. I did not read this. I did get this in the mail yesterday. Now, what I have done uh, played around with it a little bit as much as I was able to and so far well, even with the little bitty rings they got kind of warm sitting in my truck they're still pretty good on there though it does have about five inch or so eye relief I'd say that's about perfect right there where she sets for me and you could always go a little bit closer and adjust your focal point. Now, it does have a little bit of heft to it. It's just over 14 and a half ounces. Air compressor. So it's just over 14 and a half ounces. And then if you know, you're know you really conservative on weight, instead of spending the $67 on a scope, why don't you go spend $670 on some of the scopes that I've had on a couple of my wish lists for um, the past several years and uh, I think this guy's gonna do okay for what I want and uh, we'll try to get some footage in here on what the crosshairs actually look like on this one all right so here we go try to get it to focus it wants to focus the camera wants to focus elsewhere there you have it see the crosshairs and yeah, we're holding it about a good five inches in front of the camera, so it does have some added eye relief to it. That was at two power. Excuse my shakiness. Not having this mounted to something does make it a little bit more, get it to focus in. But there you can see the qu crosshairs quite readily and uh, my shaky hands from holding this clear out in front of me all the way. But we'll see how well the hash marks line up. They are crisp, they are clear. And other than me trying to hold this thing just right, 
Oh, and my arms are getting tired. Uh, zoom back out. It should do really fine. Trying to find this sweet spot in front of the camera is not as easy as you would think. Uh, there we go. All right, there she is. Should do fun. But overall, the springs and basic retention on the caps are not too bad. Now the clarity of whether or not the camera kind of picked it up or not, a little bit harder to say. I would honestly call the clarity on this as good just about as my Nikon, even when, and my Nikon's a 4 to 12 or a 4 to 14. Zoom in, a little shaky, which is just me. But I'm not getting any fisheye out of the edges. Uh, wasn't yesterday when I was checking it out either. Not getting any major distortions. Uh, plain clarity. Um, there is a little bit of, if you can see it there, a little bit of the purple UV coating or whatever they do. It's supposed to be nitrogen purged for fog resistance. And on that side too, you can see where they do have the coating. Uh, granted, these things are becoming a lot more common to find something a little bit better than back when I spent just about as much on a couple of other optics when I was growing up when I was a teenager because I thought they'd be cool at gun shows and then like, you know, put them on a BB gun and then a week later the crosshairs start to fall out. I'm not getting that from this. Uh, like I said, there's no fish eye, there's no distortion. It's pretty clear. And so far, I think this is actually going to work really good on the pistol. And then uh, the only thing, just got to get some scope rings. And I've been perusing around for some. And that will be simple enough. Oh, you do have one tiny little dot there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Come on. Don't focus on me, focus on the scope. There we go. In line with the magnification ring. That is your indicator. Uh, throw on this, it's about a 50-50. About the same on either way. Uh, you do have a dot up here for whatever reason, I don't know, probably just general reference, same on that one for where you have your scope ring set. They are very clearly labeled on both the top for windage and elevation. They do have a fairly decent O-ring sitting around them. So quarter MOA adjustments. Uh, no side markings. Come on. Okay. So no major side markings on the rings. Now, some of you are wondering about how well they work. They do have a positive detent and a positive click, which is good. You're able to adjust your clicks back and forth. Uh, like I said, the ballistic reticle, gonna have to do some playing with, with some different rounds and uh, kind of go from there. And then maybe we can uh, test this out on one of the other uh, longer rifle builds and really see what this scope might be capable of. Overall, there you have it. It's kind of my basic kind of rundown so far of the Fayachi. And first impressions, I actually do like it. I do. Would I pay $67 for it? Yes, I would. And I know what some of you are going to say. If you're going to pay $67, why not pay $200? Well, like I said, I've got one Nikon. 
on my other rifle already. And uh, clarity wise, I will compare this one to that one. And that's like a $200 scope. So we're going to have some fun with this and see how she holds up over time. Well, until next time, I do hope that you kind of enjoyed my little thing. Links down below, as always. And uh, we're going to do some more with this thing. This isn't going to be the end of this. So we'll definitely see how she holds up. And so far, I do think she's pretty decent. Thank you.